I call Gareth Hughes. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Kia ora, nga mihi nui kia koutou. Kia ora. Mr. Speaker, today I introduced and tried to seek leave for a bill including Red Peak to the official referendum happening in about six weeks' time. One party blocked it and let New Zealanders not have that choice. I respect their opinion and the thousands of New Zealanders who also share their opinion, but I genuinely believe that Kiwis simply want more of a choice. So I'd like to thank the government. I welcome their decision to adopt my bill as a government bill. I'd like to thank all parties for their support. It's good that we can work together because watching politicians over the last couple of weeks, despite the massive groundswell of public support, what we saw was during an official flag consultation process was a handful of people engaged, joke flags were uploaded, yet what we saw over the course of a single week, a single week, Mr O'Rourke, 50,000 people engaged with a single flag. The fact is that we've seen those people. They've voted with their feet online, on the petition, on emails to parliamentarians, and it's good that those people get a choice. If those members think those people shouldn't get a choice, they can stand up and say it in their speeches. I'm standing up today so Kiwis get more of a choice. Because no matter what that party says, and no matter what the pundits have said, the columnists, the people on Twitter, it's pretty clear that Red Peak hasn't peaked yet. So my bill, which has been adopted by the government, is about giving Kiwis a choice in the referendum. What we saw was a phenomenal public reaction. Now I'd like to explain my personal uh, relationship with it. Because I'll admit I was incredibly lukewarm on this particular flag at first. Incredibly lukewarm. I don't think I would have picked it out of that 10,000. I think my favourite pick was probably the laser kiwi, which had garnered so much international attention and was such a symbol of the entire process and the seriousness of which kiwi public was taking it. But Mr Speaker, what I saw in the background uh, explanation of this particular flag, the, the, the words of the designer, the different symbolic uh, interpretations we saw, such as the, the meeting house over the, the mountain, what we saw is that it actually built a connection. What many New Zealanders told me is that it actually looked like a flag, unlike maybe some of the marketing type associations people felt with their official four. What we saw was an incredible 50,000 people in a single week engage. What we've seen is the public print their own flags, run them up mountains, and Garage Project, one of my favourite microbreweries in the entire country, a Wellington-based country company, they've even made their own Red Peak brew, which I'm looking forward to having a try if this bill passes, which I'm hopeful and optimistic it will. So my message to the people who maybe don't support Red Peak is that irregardless of where you stand, whether you support keeping the existing flag, whether you support a silver fern, whether you support the red peak or something else, this is simply about choice. It's about this house listening to the public, listening to the groundswell of support. Because what we do know is that actually a huge percentage of the population do not want to change the flag. We saw that TV3 poll of 70% against, and I respect that opinion. A flag is simply a bit of cloth up a pole. But it's also something a bit more than that. It's a symbolic representation on behalf of all of us. And in multicultural New Zealand, and modern New Zealand in 2015, we need to make sure we get this right because our existing flag's more than 100 years old. Now, what we know is this referendum's going ahead. Despite my misgivings, and I don't think this is the most appropriate use of the government's time, or the most appropriate use of $26 million, but what a fact is, is this referendum's going ahead. That law was passed. My party voted against it. We thought there were more important priorities, but the referendum is going ahead. And what I wanted to make sure was that it wasn't the fast that it looked like it was turning into, that it wasn't ignoring those tens of thousands of Kiwis who wanted a say. So, irregardless where you stand, Kiwis will get a say, and as this law passes, they'll get more of a choice, which is a good thing. 
Now, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to the $26 million being expended, I think there are more important things to be spending it on. We should be spending it on feeding every kid a, a, a healthy lunch in our schools. There's so many more things that are so, so much more important. The process uh, was incredibly flawed. We saw 10,000 entries, but many of them jokes, and a handful of people turning up to the meetings. What we saw was a process that didn't truly engage or capture uh, the interest of New Zealanders. Uh, interesting juxtaposition, I think, is the Massey University's Design Democracy School flag post project. For the cost of tens of thousands of dollars, they built a website which genuinely engaged New Zealanders. They gave New Zealanders the ability to, to, to literally comment on the flag entries. They gave New Zealanders the ability to vote on the flag entries. And in 2015, in modern uh, digital New Zealand, I'm astounded that the flag process didn't allow New Zealanders to take advantage of some of these digital technologies and ability to instantaneously provide feedback, which ultimately would have delivered a better decision than what we saw in the four hours of consideration without a designer on the group. I'd also like to point out that Parliament didn't have to do this step of going into urgency to pass it today. I'm not talking about New Zealand First blocking leave. I'm talking about the government, uh, through order and council, um, amending some of the options, which was always a live option. So what we know is Kiwis care about the flag. They're engaging with it. Many people don't think it's right to change it, and I'm looking forward to hearing their opinions loud and clear through the referendum process. But why the Green Party acted today is that we wanted to break that political deadlock. We wanted to offer a constructive, positive solution because we didn't want to just be sitting around watching a political deadlock emerge when we know we could work together. This is what people at home, on Twitter, reading the newspapers, watching the telly, wanted to see. They wanted to see parties working together in the common interest. And what Parliament is doing tonight is simply about working together to give Kiwis more choice. Now, in purely practical terms, the bill essentially does three things. Uh, we drafted it incredibly simply. Uh, I wanted a, a simple bill that only dealt with the single issue. I know other parties feel incredibly strongly about other issues. I respect that. I think there's great merit in their opinions, and I'm uh, disappointed that the isn't an ability to include it in this bill because ultimately I was looking for a pragmatic solution so that we weren't just sitting around playing politics, that we weren't just sitting around talking about it, we were actually getting on and giving Kiwis choice. So this bill does three things. It adds a fifth option included in clause four. It isn't prejudicing the Governor General's ultimate decision making. So in clause five, it makes this clear, but has reference to Red Peak in the explanatory statement. So no one can be confused that the Governor General could pick the laser kiwi if he chose. And lastly, in uh, schedule four, it amends some of the mathematical formulas for its inclusion. So in summary, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to say how it is important that this parliament can work together that our parties can come together uh, across party lines. And this is something the Green Party has had as its mission ever since we entered Parliament in 1996. We've worked successfully with Labour when they were in government. We've worked successfully with the current government through home insulation, the National Cycleway. We've worked with the ACT Party. We're proud of some of the wins we've had with New Zealand First. Our place in this parliament, right literally in the middle of this debating chamber, is to work with parties. And I'm proud that my party's bill was picked up by the government. I'm proud that we could act constructively, positively, that we could maybe put politics aside for a little while so that Kiwis could have the choice that was so clearly uh, desired. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I call uh, 